Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the Retro Wrestling Room. Today we are going to look back at another match that Dave Meltzer has rated 5 stars and to see if we agree with that rating or not. We are visiting another new promotion in our series today, this time being All Japan Pro Wrestling. And we are going to be looking back at a match that took place before either of us were even born. That's old. Hey. But y'all don't say that. Shut up. This is Tiger Mask 2. This is Kuniaki Kobayashi from March 9th, 1985. Why is he called Tiger Mask 2? Who's Tiger Mask 1? Oh, we'll get to the history session. I'll do that in a bit. Thanks. As always, I am joined by the road warrior animal to my Heidenreich, Vicky through the looking glass. Hi, guys. How are you today, Vicky? I am good. The sun is shining, which makes me super duper happy. Good. <laughs> I'm glad to hear that. Someone seems very cheerful today. Yeah, this is, it's sunny and the sunshine makes me happy. It doesn't happen that often in the UK. Especially Wales. Yeah. So, the last recording session that we had is still a bit of a secret, but how do you think that it went? I think it was good and I'm super excited for people to know more about it. Yeah, me too. It's going to be a while though, I think. Probably a couple of months. So watch this space, guys. Make sure you subscribe. What do you think this match will look like, considering that this match took place eight years before the Ikira Hokuto versus Shinobu Kandori match that we reviewed back in episode three? Was that the oldest match we've ever reviewed? Yes. Okay. It is so far. So I guess it's going to look old? Probably older, but eight years before, probably. <laughs> oh, like, I'm not good with like dating wrestling. I don't really watch much older wrestling. Hmm. It just reminds me of the type of thing I'd watch with my granddad when I was a kid. But I very much am a 90s wrestling and newer. Anything but, older than that could all be the same year to me. Okay. But you know, like, when there's like an old clip of football that comes on and it's in the 90s and it looks like it's 100 years old now? Yeah. Do you think it's going to look like that or do you think we may not notice as much? I think all wrestling from the 70s and 80s and up to 1995 looks the same age. Do you? Yeah. <laughs> okay. It all looks like, because it looks old, but it all looks like it's in like one chunk to me. Okay. It doesn't look like, basically, it all looks, I think because it's Ric Flair era, to me, any wrestling from that era looks the same. Okay. From like those years. I don't know why to me it does. It's, it's weird. I'm not good with di like dates and times. To me, everybody is my age, unless you're like older and then you're my mum's age or my dad's <laughs> age. No one's ever in between. <laughs> Everyone's like my age, except if they're older. <laughs> yeah. Nice. No, like, for example, in work, in the office, I'm on a team of ten, and I just assume everybody on my team is my age. Like, they're not. Like, there's one girl that's, like, 21, but I just assume she's my age. I just... So you forget that, like, their references are different to yours. Yeah, I forget that I'm old. I, I forget. <laughs> I see what you're saying. I hope this makes sense. I probably sound really, really dull. No, 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 of course not. But hopefully... You would never send doll, Vicky. I hope this makes sense. If it does, please let me know that I'm not an idiot in the comments. Or if I am an idiot, feel free to call me out. Anyway, moving swiftly on. Correction. <laughs> anyway, moving swiftly on. So what was happening elsewhere in the wrestling world at this time? From March the 1st through to the 18th of April, New Japan Pro Wrestling held their Young Lions Cup. This year, the final was between Sunji Kasugi, who was the eventual winner, up against Keishi Yamada, who was better known as Jushin Thunder Liger. Also in that tournament, there were some more names wrestling fans may recognise, including Tatsutoshi Goto, Masahiro Chono, and the legend that is Keiji Muto. On the 31st of March, the wrestling landscape changed forever, when the WWF held their first ever WrestleMania show live from Madison Square Garden. On the show, Junkyard Dog took on the reigning Intercontinental Champion Greg Valentine. Andre the Giant defeated Big John Studd in a Korea vs £15,000 Body Slam Challenge match. Wendy Richter defeated Leilani Kai to win the WWF Women's Championship. And then in the main event of the show, Hulk Hogan and Mr. T defeated the team of Paul Orndorff and Roddy Piper. Then, the next month, AWA held their Starcade event at the Civic Center in Minnesota. The Road Warriors defeated the team of Kurt and Larry the Axe Hennig. By DQ, 
to hold on to the AWA tag titles. And in the main event of the show, in a handicapped steel cage match, Jerry Blackwell and Sergeant Slaughter managed to overcome the team of King Tonga, Sheik Adnan and the masked superstar. When deciding upon what works as a character in pro wrestling, people sometimes look at different aspects of their life for inspiration. Remember in the mid 90s when the WWF was obsessed with giving everyone that signed a gimmick where they also had another profession? We had doctors, bin collectors, hockey players, race car drivers, you name it, there was probably a wrestler with any job description. Even though the character of Tiger Mask had been in wrestling now for over 40 years, it wasn't where the character actually started. Back in 1968, Iki Kajuara came up with an idea for a manga based around the character Koneato Date, who was this feared and vicious wrestler who played a heinous foreign wrestler in the United States. His ring name would be Tiger Mask. In the storyline, Date would make his way back home to Japan and come across a young boy who stated that he wanted to be a villain just like his idol Tiger Mask. Changing his ways, Date vowed that he would now completely change his ways and become a heroic wrestler instead. The arch rival to Tiger Mask was the organisation known as Tiger's Den, an organisation who trained young impressionable kids to become heel wrestlers on the condition that they make half of their earnings generated by the wrestlers. As he came from the organisation himself, Date decides to no longer be associated with the Tiger's Den and instead of giving them the money, instead he hands it over to a local orphanage. On the back of the success of the manga, Toei Animation turned the story into a hugely successful anime that ran for over a hundred episodes. New Japan Pro Wrestling cashed in on the success of both the anime and the manga and gained the rights of the character and gave the gimmick to Satori Sayama. The gimmick was almost guaranteed to get over in Japan, but it became a worldwide success as well when Sayama under the mask. He was successful in gaining both junior titles in the NWA and the WWF, becoming the very first wrestler to hold both of the belts simultaneously. In 1983, after having successful matches with the likes of Bret Hart, Chris Adams, Dynamite Kid and the original Black Tider, Sayama decided to step away from the character and stated that it was because of backstage politics. This could have easily been the end of the character in wrestling. But only one short year later, All Japan Pro Wrestling acquired the rights and quickly put it on a relative newcomer at the time who would become a huge star in his own right in due time. The man was Mitsuharu Misawa. Here is when he would feud with the other man in today's video, Kuniaki Kobayashi. Even though Misawa himself would step away from the character in 1990, the character is still going today and his influence can still be felt. The King character from Tekken was obviously a huge tribute to the character and in 2016 a sequel to the original anime was released titled Tiger Mask W. Maybe we'll take a future look at some of the animes mentioned in this video but for now let's get back to 1985 and check out Tiger Mask 2 vs Kuniaki Kobayashi. So when we start at the video of this match we get three women in the ring holding bouquets of flowers standing in the iconic half and half ring. Why do they have flowers? I felt like I was watching like the final of like Bake Off or something. <laughs> do they have flowers? Yeah. Do they? The runners up get flowers. Okay. Uh, can you tell us about your flapjack, please? Started making it. Had a breakdown. <laughs> bon appetit. <laughs> <laughs> that's what it felt like to me. Maybe that's where they got it from. Maybe. I didn't understand. I was very confused. I wondered what you put on. If you've ever watched any of these videos, Vicky gets very passionate about different colour rings. So, I'm holding my head while I'm asking this, but I already know the answer. So, Vicky, what are your thoughts on the quick glimpse you got of the ring? It's hideous. Why? I don't understand. Why don't you like it? I don't like it. I like a white ring. Or worst case scenario, they've got like prints on it, kind of like boxing or like MMA when they've like sponsors on it. 
I don't mind them having logos and things on it, but I hate a coloured ring. And why this one's split down the middle diagonally? Like red corner and the blue corner. No, you don't have corners in wrestling. You have four corners. What you just said is one of the most insanely idiotic things I have ever heard. Also, I did make a note though that there was no um, steps on the corner of the ring. There was just like a weird little ladder. Yeah, I noticed the little ladder. <laughs> it yeah, they just like... took it off to put to let them in, and then. Yeah, it looked like the ladder off like a kid's slide. Yeah, I noted that that was really weird. Okay. Because he didn't even use it. No, he just kind of jumped in. And the ring was really short as well. Yeah. You'll notice in the match when they stand next to the ring, normally the apron is like above their waist. It's quite high. Yeah. Whereas this one was really low. It was like just above their knee. Maybe they're just really tall. I thought that at first. I'm not going to lie. I thought they were like the tallest wrestlers ever. But no. First aid is Kuniaki Kobayashi running into the ring wearing black and red. The next aid, it's Tiger Mask 2, who runs to the ring with his cape flapping in the breeze like Adam West Batman. And he had streamers. You love streamers. I do you like streamers. Now, coming into this match, I thought that Tiger Mask was going to be the face and Kuniaki Kobayashi was going to be the heel. But they both seemed to get pretty split crowd reaction, I thought. Yeah, going into it, considering I don't know any of the history or backstory... I couldn't tell who I was supposed to be rooting for. Mm. So as soon as Tiger Mask jumps off the top rope and his feet hit the mat, he is Pearl Harbor by Kobayashi who clotheslines him straight out of the ring and looks to do a running attack to the outside, but is stopped by the ref as streamers start to cover the ring. They can't Kobayashi long enough for Tiger Mask to make his way back into the ring and for the ring announcements to be made. The bell rings and they circle each other around the ring until Kobayashi fires off a spinning back kick that cracks Tiger Mask in the face, but he stays standing onto his feet. Strangely, they then lock up, which is an odd way to start a match. Usually, it's the other way round. Tiger Mask then hits the ropes, but gets knocked down first, but fires back with a standing drop kick. Tiger Mask then delivers a lovely looking vertical suplex, but can only manage a one count. Back on their feet, Kobayashi knocks Tiger Mask to the mat, and tries to get the quick count again, but can only manage a one count itself. The pinning is terrible. I'm not surprised he only got a one count, because he was hardly touching him. He seemed like he was miles off. You said this at the time as well. It's almost like they're trying to get quick covers, but they don't like hook a leg or anything, do they? No, but he wasn't even like putting his body weight on them when he pinned. Mm. He was like, hovering above him. It was like the worst pin I've ever seen. The worst pin? It was up there. It's a strong allegation. It, it's up there. And I've seen some terrible pins. Out of nowhere, Kobayashi picks up Tiger Mask and delivers a huge looking tombstone pile driver. It's so strange to see such a big move being used as a quick throwaway move in the first minute of a match. I thought that. I thought like, the move was technically good, but I did feel like it was a spot. It just seemed out of place, didn't it? Yeah, I feel like there was a list of like, we want all of these moves in the match. Can you do this at this point, this at this point, this at this point, and just kind of like slot it in? It just didn't seem to flow into a storyline or anything. There was no build-up, it was kind of throw away, it didn't seem to do anything. And I was just a bit like, I didn't understand it. But then, I don't know if maybe the commentary would have given like more information, or they would have maybe like brought you along with it more. Hmm. The commentary are really into this match, though. I love Japanese commentary. They're so excited. They are very excited. Like, I don't want this to come across wrong, so apologies if it does. But I just love Japanese commentary in general, because I think with the language of being so animated, they always come across, like, excited. And even watching like, other Japanese shows, like Takeshi's Castle as a kid, yeah. everything is so energetic and it makes you more excited. But, um, yeah, I didn't understand a word of it other than the odd wrestling move that they mentioned. <laughs> Kobayashi then hits a sling blade for a two count a locks in a chin lock in the first time that they actually slow down in the bout. Kobayashi then changes the hold into a cross face chicken wing. Tiger Mask makes it to the ropes but Kobayashi gives no time and starts laying in leg kicks and spinning back kicks. After a quick back and forth with strikes Tiger Mask lands a flying clothesline. Not to be outdone by his challenger Tiger Mask gets Kobayashi up and delivers a jumping pile driver, but again can only garner a one count. He could have got a two or three count if he had pinned him better. That is a very fair point. If he took the leg. Yeah, or just put some weight on it. Fair enough. Put your back into it. 
In the next sequence, Kobayashi knocks Tiger Mask down, but Tiger Mask strikes back with a Ricky Steamboat style arm drag, followed by a spinning back kick, but Kobayashi absorbs the shot and floors his opponent with his own. He then lands a snap suplex for a two count, followed by an inverted triangle choke, and targets the arm. Once escaped, they stay attached in a test of strength until Tiger Mask delivers a kick to the chest on Kobayashi and he rolls under the ropes to the outside. The crowd love Kobayashi. Yeah, it's really strange. I just, I don't know why. I didn't expect them to be that into him. I thought he was going to be all for Tiger Mask. Same. I was, I was surprised. Not that I knew anything, but I was surprised they were so behind him because watching it... You didn't get much of a backstory, I didn't know, I just assumed... I don't know why I assumed Tiger Mask would be the face. Just looks like a typical good guy, doesn't he? And, yeah. And the fact that Kobayashi like attacked him before the bell as well. I don't know, he just gave off more of a heel vibe, but the crowd are really into him. Maybe it's like Stone Cold when he was here. Maybe. Crowd loved him. Let us know if you know more about it. Once back in the ring, Tiger Mask gets straight onto his opponent and just watch this sequence. Not satisfied with just that, Tiger Mask takes a huge risk by doing a screwing senton over the ropes. He misses, but instantly gets back up to his feet and back into the ring. It's so strange as there is no selling at all. Even after a failed jump to the outside, there doesn't seem to be any reason for the moves, and it's just sequences pasted together. That was my overall review of the match. Yeah, it's strange, isn't it? There's like, you've got like 30 seconds of action at a time. So yeah, for me, I've put that it was um, wooden and choreographed, and I felt like they had their spots, but there was nothing like impromptu in between. There was no linking of moves. It was just hmm. a case of... This is your script. This is what we want you to do. And they kind of didn't just like go with the flow or like, I don't know, they didn't tend, I didn't have that feeling that they like gelled together. Maybe because I like quite like fast paced wrestling and there's some of the matches that we've watched like previously in the five star series where it just flows really nicely and there's like a fluidity to it and it just feels natural. Whereas this felt like this is the spot, move on. This is the spot, move on. But I don't know if that's just because it is an older older match and it's a different style of wrestling but that was one of the things that I picked up on. Once back in the ring Kuniaki takes charge and locks in a Boston Crab. Tiger Mask escapes and sets up a double underhook suplex then hits a flying crossbody. When Tiger Mask tries to throw Kuniaki back into the ropes he holds on to avoid a jumping nothing which is always a fun spot when you can't work out what they were going to do if it hadn't been reversed or avoided. Tiger Mask throws Kobayashi into the corner again and runs up him and does a backflip off him like the guy in the full Monty, but actually lands it and gets an instant lariat for his troubles. Kuniaki lands a big kick to the midsection of Tiger Mask and forces him to retreat to the outside. He then runs full steam ahead and tries to hit the suicide dive through the ropes but misses and crashes to the floor. Trying to trump his opponent, Tiger Mask delivers his own suicide dive to the middle ropes and crashes into Kobayashi. Tiger Mask enters the ring first and suplexes his opponent back over the ropes to the inside and then Kobayashi gets back into the fight by landing a high angled belly to back suplex. Tiger Mask goes back to the suplexes though and lands a huge superplex off the top rope but can still only get a two count. He climbs back up to the most dangerous rope and lands a diving elbow for another close call. Tiger Mask makes a mistake by climbing up to Brett's rope again but with his back to the ring. Kobayashi gets under him and lands an electric chair for a huge landing. Kobayashi hits a lovely looking perfect plex but they end up in the ropes. Tiger Mask then grabs Kobayashi on his way back to his feet and takes himself and his opponent over the top rope to the outside via suplex. Once they get back to their feet, Kobayashi runs Tiger Mask into the corner post and hits a clumsy looking belly to back slam on the outside. During this, the referee has been counted and gets the 10 to end the match as a double count out draw. And just like that, the five star match is over. I bloody love a draw. <laughs> So, 
この1番1000人のお客様からは盛んな延長コール山田さんこれは分かりますねそうですねまあやっぱり So, Vicky, that was Kuniaki Kobayashi versus Tiger Mask 2. Now, judging from your face and judging from your comments in the match, I got a feeling this may not get a five star review from you. Sadly, not. I'm giving it 2.5 out of 5. 2.5? Dead bang in the middle.、Okay. Technically, it was good. The length of the match was good. It was what, 15? 16 minutes? Yeah, about that. So it wasn't too long a match. It was technically good. Not my favourite style of wrestling. But as I mentioned previously, I just felt that it felt a bit wooden to me.、Uh, it was just forgettable. There wasn't anything that stood out. And I mean, we've done a lot of these five star matches now. And if you tell me the match and give me a reminder of who it is, I can normally remember something about it. Even if I didn't. Enjoy it that much, I can remember something. Whereas there's nothing. The most exciting thing was the commentary, and the only thing I think I remember was oh, is that the match that he had streamers when he came out? <laughs> and I think if that's my takeaway from the match, but as I said, I'm not the target audience for this. No, maybe not. I mean, this is six years before you were even born, so. So, yeah, I didn't want to be harsh. That's why I went slap bang in the middle. I thought I don't want to give it a low score because it wasn't bad, but I'm not the target audience. It wasn't my cup of tea, but there was nothing technically wrong for me to mark it down any more than that. Did you realise that you've actually seen Tiger Mask 2 before in one of these five star matches? No, I recognised the mask, but I didn't know if I'd seen him just like on things, you know? So, the guy behind Tiger Mask 2 is Mitsuharu Masawa. Okay. Who was in the match with Kenda Kabashi that we watched. But this was before he'd moved to heavyweight, so he was a lot thinner back those days. And, and he this... didn't have a tiger mask on. And he definitely didn't have a tiger mask on. I think the fact that this match was a few weeks before the first WrestleMania blows my mind, as every match on that card in ring was like average to bad compared to today's standards. So if this had been on that card, I think people would have been like, this is the best match of the card. Oh, okay. Yeah, so- looking back at it now, I would probably give it like a three or a three and a half, maybe. You know, I think it was good. Like, everything they did looked crisp and everything. But like you said, there didn't seem to be any rhyme or reason. No. It just seemed to be spot after spot after spot. But they weren't even like big spots that were like exciting. It's moved on so much now. I was going to say. This is also the problem that I had with the Super Click versus Will o s p r e y Ricochet, and Matt s i d e l match. But you loved that match. Yeah. Because all the spots were so much more high flying and athletic than they were back in 1985. So I think you kind of saw past them just doing spot after spot in that match because it was. More breathtaking for you. I like gymnastics and like I watch that and watch like cheerleading and things. So for me, that's more what I'm interested in. Like I love wrestling, but I like the high flying and the flips and all of that side of it. Like the technical wrestling, like、mm. the grappling or like the old. Older style of wrestling isn't really for me, so I grew up with 90s era, anything before attitude isn't、mm. really for me because it's a different style, isn't it? And it is、yeah. like a lot slower pace. And I don't mind the slower pace if there was like a big spot, but the biggest spot for me I thought was the pile driver, and that was just kind of like a throwaway. It didn't really have any impact or. Well, looking at the pile driver, it's crazy that in the、um, Los Gringos Locos match that we reviewed, when Art Bar hit a tombstone pile driver, Driver. And this was what, 94? I think the match took place. That was like the end of Octagon in the match. Like it took him out of the match.、Yeah. And like that move was like banned in Mexico and you couldn't do it. And it was like an injury angle. Whereas this was just like a quick throwaway move and you only got a one count. It's just really strange to see. Yeah, no, definitely. But yeah, no, it just wasn't my cup of tea. I'd be interested to see if anybody watching this. Thought that it was a five star match, please tell me why because I'd love to hear like your opinions、mm. and try and understand it. It's like with horror films though, like you think The Exorcist is the greatest horror film ever made, whereas for me it does nothing for me and I think it's really boring. Blasphemy. Like, so I just, I like to hear like other people's opinions. I'm not saying that you're wrong, I just want to know why because I want to understand what I'm missing. I、yeah. want this to be a five star match. Everyone that's not. I want to know why. I know is this、um, is the oldest match that we've done so far. Would you ever be interested in going back this far again, looking at a five star match? Or has this put you off going back that far? 
don't think it's put me off. Don't expect it to get a high score from me. <laughs> um, it wouldn't put me off watching them because it could be one that blows me away that Snow Old Magic could take me by surprise. So I wouldn't say I wouldn't watch them. You know me and you know the type of wrestling that I like. You know from my... It is opinions, isn't it? The five star matches. And yeah. you know which ones I would give a five star to. You could probably write down the score before we start on each one. I'd be close, I You'd think. You'd be close, I think, on what I would give it. Yeah. But no, it doesn't put me off unless it's a really long match. If that match that we just watched was an hour instead of 15 minutes, I probably would have gone and made a cup of tea. Fair enough. Well, there we have it, guys. That brings us to the end of another episode of our five-star match series. What do you guys think of the match? Do you agree with our thoughts? Will we weigh off in our rating? Leave a comment below and let us know. If you liked the video, please leave a like and subscribe as it helps us to get our little channel out there more. So for now, it's a bye from Vicky. Bye, guys. And it's a bye from me. Bye. And hopefully, we'll see you for another instalment soon.